Hey guys, it's Uno, and um, you might notice my voice might sound a little bit different, and that's simply because I got a new microphone. I got the AT2020, it's the Audio-Technica uh, mic, and it's a pretty affordable mic, and it's really, really, really uh, transparent, sounds really great, I love it, so yeah, I'm really stoked. Um, definitely recommend it. Um, but more importantly, I got a tutorial today on um, using CPU or actually uh, conserving your computer's resources, that being RAM and CPU. And to begin with, um, RAM, there's a lot of confusion as to how RAM is used when you're producing. RAM is used mostly when you drag samples into the playlist, um, audio clips, whatever. Um, anytime that you drag the audio clip in, it'll register that you have a little bit more RAM being used. Um, essentially, the way I like to think of it, or the way I like to explain it uh, in really simple terms, is uh, RAM is also called memory. And uh, the audio clips are already created um, sound files. So if you drag it in, it's almost kind of like the computer is remembering what was you know previously recorded in this uh, these audio files so for instance you know these <clears throat> right here these uh, vocal clips just kind of uh, throwing like a an example out there that uh, those would use uh, some RAM okay um, CPU is mostly used when you use a lot of soft synths um, basically there's a mathematical code that is sent from your soft synth or your generator to the CPU based on what parameters you're, uh, you've set on the uh, VST <clears throat> and it will uh, that's what causes the uh, output to sound a certain way um, but it's done all through the CPU so CPU is mostly used for when you're using MIDI as opposed to RAM when uh, being used for samples Okay. Uh, CPU can be conserved a number of different ways. First of all, uh, the easiest way is don't uh, create any new or try not to create uh, too many generators or uh, soft synths. Just use only as many as you need. As you can see here, I still have quite uh, a few that I'm using, but uh, still uh, still managing. Um, secondly, you want to go to the mixer here, and you want to make sure you're not using a ton of audio effects. As you can see, I am using a ton of audio effects, but I do have a pretty quick computer, and uh, it handles it pretty well. And um, yeah, just anytime you have a new soft synth or effect going, that's when it uses up uh, CPU. So you want to keep that to a minimum. Um, another thing you're going to want to do is anytime you have a plugin, uh, whether it's a generator or an effect that allows you to oversample, while you're mixing, you're going to want to keep the oversampling off. And the reason that is, is because oversampling uh, increases the quality of the output, but it does take up more CPU. The input, when it's put into whatever. Um, uh, VST or plugin that's you know active. Um, whenever it's oversampling, basically when it goes in, it'll be upsampled up. So if you're working at 44.1 kilohertz, it'll go up to like you know 80, 88.2 or whatever the uh, the plugin wants to you know put it up to. It'll process it and then it'll output it. It does like as I say require more processing power, but it does end up sounding better. I always click oversampling on when I'm about to render it as my final uh, render. Uh, so it does get the higher quality, um, but it uh, it will sort of glitch out on you if you and it will overload if you uh, do it on too many instances of uh, the plugin. So uh, right now I have all I have a bunch of exciters throughout all my mixer here and I have clicked off all the oversamplings on all of them and you can see that CPU is doing pretty well up here. Uh, another cool little macro that you can do is go to tools, macro, and under miscellaneous you're gonna have switch smart disable for all plugins. 
that will essentially turn on smart disable for all your plugins. That's kind of like a quick way of doing it. Um, and I'll explain what that does in a second. Um, go to audio settings. Make sure that you have ASIO for all on, or if you have any outboard ASIO um, sound card, make sure you're selected that because that'll definitely uh, decrease the latency, but more importantly, uh, increase the efficiency uh, your, at which your um, CPU is working. <clears throat> uh, if you weren't aware of this already, ASIO for all is basically um, uh, a driver that allows your sound card to process sound differently than the stock Windows uh, driver does. Um, it's much more efficient and as I say there's l much less latency which is very important especially when you're uh, recording. Sampling rate, the higher your sampling rate the more CPU you are going to use. Um, studio quality, I say that you know, with quotes around studio quality, is considered around 48 kilohertz. Um, but most studios use higher than that, sometimes 82, most of the time up to even 96 kilohertz. So, um, but 44.1 is still a great quality, that's CD quality. Uh, still, you know, pretty hi fi, works just fine. Um, do safe overloads that basically will prevent FL Studio from freezing if you have any CPU overloads. So if CPU gets too high, it uh, won't freeze the DAW that is uh, open. Um, CPU, this section right here, it deals mostly with saving CPU. Multi-threaded generator processing allows you to uh, process different synths that you're uh, you know, using at the time. Uh, using different cores, multiple cores on your computer. Um, if you only have one core on your computer, then it won't do anything. I used to do that and it didn't do anything. Uh, Multi-thread and mix mixer processing is kind of similar, except it allows you to uh, use multiple cores on the mixer. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> um, if you're wondering if you have multiple cores, uh, if you have an i5 or an i7, it'll say um, kind of below your keyboard when you got the computer or if you still have it on there. It'll say Intel Core i5, Core i7. Um, I'm trying to think of some off the top of my head. Usually MacBooks uh, tend to have an i5 or an i7. Um, it, it just depends. But those two are the ones that kind of stand out in my mind as uh, having multiple cores. Um, just makes you uh, that much more powerful when it comes to um, CPU. Smart Disable. Uh, I went over that earlier with the macro, but uh, basically it allows you to disable any uh, native fruity um, effect or generator that isn't being used at a single time and it'll allow uh, that to be shut down so it saves CPU that way. Very useful, works really well. If you see I turn it off here and CPU spikes through the roof. Turn it back on, CPU goes back down. Line tickling, so I haven't had any problems with it unclicked or clicked. I leave it clicked because it does save a little bit of CPU. And then finally, resampling. Linear is the most efficient and 512 point sync is the most quality. I usually go about six point Hermite because you can't really tell a difference uh, between pretty much everything after linear. Uh, well, 512 is pretty high quality, but um, six point is just fine for me and I have a quad core, about 3.2 gigahertz. Um, so, you know, that works just fine for me. It's really pretty decent quality, so yeah. Um, that is pretty much the tutorial in a nutshell. Uh, I tried to get it done in 10 minutes and it uh, looks like it was successful. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. Um, I would be happy to answer. Any recommendations for another tutorial? Maybe I'll do some sy uh, synthesis tutorials pretty soon. Um, also, I'll have my music in the description box, uh, links to my mastering channel and also my SoundCloud. Uh, so yeah, uh, just recommend something for me to do next time.
uh, soft synth, maybe a massive tutorial. Um, and th 